Hello my friends and welcome to another skincare empties video. Can you tell it is time to do this video? I got this cute little basket at a thrift store and I love it. It's perfect for holding my skincare empties but the problem with it is I know when it's time to do empties because it turns into a carnival game. I throw products up on it and they, they bounce right back out. <laughs> when you can't win, it's time to film an empties video. Now, as always, there are timestamps and links in the description box below. You can also check the description box if you are going, why am I looking at so many empty products? It's all explained down there. But I wanna say one more thing before we get into this video. Some of you may have noticed that uh, this is the time of the year where I do a favorites video, and yet it seems I'm slacking. <laughs> So in today's empties video, I'm hoping to kind of bring you inside my mind so you can see why that video is delayed. We can talk about the decisions I'm making, the products that, you know, I, I can't go without. I've already repurchased my favorites from this video, but there's a, a lot of them. <laughs> but it's hard for me to do that because as a channel who tries new stuff, it, it's hard to justify repurchases. So that's how I know what the true favorites are but there's still some decision making going on we're, we're gonna chat all about that in today's video let's clean this up and get into our cleansers category i feel like it's been a while since i've had a real layout of cleansers for this video but we do this time because again trying to decide on favorites we do have one of my holy grails, the CeraVe Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser with 4% benzoyl peroxide. That is a holy grail for me in terms of acne. I feel like I overstocked this last year in the, in the Ulta 10X points. I bought two of these and I'm finally finishing my first. In, in fairness, I do need to say, you know, I, I am a skincare content creator. I don't go through products at a normal person speed. That's why I didn't restock in this year's 10X event. I will probably restock next year because it is a product that really, really works for me. I feel like it probably won't be as game changing for people who can use benzoyl peroxide as a leave-on, but I can't. And so having it in this cleanser is perfect for me. Absolutely will be in my top 10. The Make Prim Rice Biome Bubble Peeling Cleanser. We did Make Prim a few months ago and they had already discontinued this product by the time I made that video. I did receive this one in PR. I know why they discontinued it. I don't know if you can see this on camera, you probably can. Do you see how gunky this lid looks? I thought about cleaning this off to have a more presentable video, but no, I'm keeping it looking like this because this is the truth about skincare. Yeah, it, it kept clogging. I had to replace the pump on this. So it seems like there was something kind of wrong with the product and I assume that's why it got discontinued. It's a shame, I loved it, but there, there must have been something about this product that I think was affecting the integrity of the packaging itself. So hopefully the next generation is better. Now, micellar water. I bought this one from Aveen, their makeup removing micellar water, and it was fine, but I won't repurchase it. For me, in this entire category, my favorite is still the kombucha cleansing treatment from Fresh. I'm always looking for a dupe for that one, something a little bit more affordable, but that is my favorite. So yeah, this was fine, but fine is the problem. I want greatness in my skincare. Sometimes, some, some products can be fine. The Good Molecules Instant Cleansing Balm. This also looks funky because this is what I take with me when I travel. Yeah, I don't know, this always seems to happen when I travel with this, but I do really like it. It has that right consistency for traveling. It, you know, it's not gonna melt everywhere. It, it holds its shape. And I like the convenience of the travel size. The Elemis White Flowers Eye and Lip Makeup Remover. I talked about that recently in terms of I didn't love it. I did get this in PR. I've had it for ages, but it's just not my favorite. I like Lancome's by Facile more. In fact, I like Neutrogena's Makeup Remover more. And now that I found one from Innisfree, I just, I, I'm done with this. Look, I've probably got one use left, but I'm done with it. Let's clean it out and recycle it. <laughs> And I have a Tony Moly cognac sponge in this video today. Yeah, so I really like cognac sponges to this day. I have, you know, some Foreo devices. I have one from Butta, but when my barrier is in a rough spot, that's when I like to break out a cognac sponge. In spite of having all those devices, sometimes a cognac sponge is the right fit 
for my more sensitive, uh, barrier damaged prone skin type. Yeah, cognac sponges are great. Let's move on to what toner and essence. I know this looks like an astronomical amount of toner, but it's because I have gone back to DIYing my sheet masks. I will post a link to that in the corner. Let me say real quickly, if you use toner and you find yourself going, I'm not really sure what this toner is doing for my skin, do that. Do what I show in that video because it is such an insightful look at what your toners do because you know, you're really locking those toners into your skin. You really, really, really get to see what they do. So with my new insight into these, let me explain what I have seen all five of these products do. So the Day Mello Hotunia Cordata Essence, as well as the iUnique Tea Tree Relief Toner, both of these contain a bit of tea tree oil, which is a highly antimicrobial ingredient. And it's interesting with both of these, when I make those sheet masks with these, I can really see the results of targeting my acne since I, I do deal with acne. Those help me fight acne while still giving a bit of hydration and a bit of calming. The Eccentry Onion New Pear Essence Toner, that is next level for hydrating. It has a, more of a, a, a viscous consistency to it. And that texture gives you more hydration while still being a very calming product. You know, there's research into onion essence or onion extract rather in terms of wound healing. So I feel like that is such a good choice for when my skin is already irritated. You know, these are for when I'm fighting acne. This is for when the acne is not so bad, but my skin is irritated. Oh, it's so great. And no, it doesn't smell like onions. Now the Tower 28 Daily Rescue Facial Spray, I have a lot of mixed thoughts on that. By the way, it is a spray, but real quickly, let me show you. Uh, I ended up getting this in some kind of Sephora favorite set and we don't waste here. I'm going to take that sprayer and put it on <laughs> my product from last week's haul. You know, why not? Why not? I'm glad it's a generic sprayer on here because it seems to fit a lot of products. <laughs> anyway, that is a great antimicrobial product, but honestly, that's kind of all it does. This is actually not very hydrating. It's not very calming, but it does seem to really fight bacteria very effectively. I know some people have said there's dupes on Amazon. I don't really seek out the dupes. I don't really seek out buying this because, you know, again, tea tree oil is also a potent antimicrobial ingredient. And I think that's always what keeps me from buying this. You know, I'll get it in a set, sure, but it's just not enough of a product. I, I want more going on in a product, especially if I'm paying, you know, Sephora prices. So, but don't get me wrong because I do like it and I will absolutely use it when I have it. I just, I just won't pay full price or anywhere near close to that. <laughs> the Dr. Cervical Vegan Kombucha Tea Essence. This is a great hydrating and moisturizing essence. I do have to say with this one, it, uh, it started to smell a little funny towards the end. I actually finished this up on my decollete area because, you know, I got, I got a little nervous. I don't want to be introducing bacteria to my face when I'm spending all this effort fighting bacteria. So I'm not sure what that was about. I did have it for kind of a while. I bought this probably about a year ago. Oh, oh, look at that. It actually says it expires in September. Well, that could be what was going on with that one. I bought that from Style Korean, I'm pretty sure. They don't always have the absolute freshest product. I think they have a little bit of a slower turnover than, you know, Stylevana or Yes Style. We are moving into the serum section. There is a division right here between kind of more active serums, and these are really all for barrier support. This is technically a moisturizer, but I treat it like a serum, so we're gonna put it in this section. This is a pretty good representation of what I use. I'm very diligent about A, vitamin C serum, and I'm very diligent about barrier support. But I don't actually love the SkinCeuticals. I, I don't, I don't think it is better than Geek and Gorgeous. I, I just, I don't. You know, I just put out a video talking about how skincare is personal, so you can feel free to disagree with me if SkinCeuticals is your holy grail, but for me, it's, it's not. It's not my holy grail. I bought this on some kind of a discount and I, I feel like I stressed myself out with this purchase because I felt like I had to love it, but I didn't. It's too expensive not to love it, but I didn't. It just was this, this continuous internal conflict. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
this is not my personal favorite. I'm sure it is for some people, but it's not for me and I need to stop buying it and thinking it's gonna be different this time, because it's not. <laughs> R&W's for Turpinol Plus. This is one of the products that is holding back my top 10 list. I think this is a holy grail for me. You know how in the toner section I was just saying the importance of antimicrobial activity. This product right here is using one of the constituents of tea tree oil, one of the active constituents, and therefore it is standardized and controlled, and wow, it seems to make an incredible product for me. It seems to. Now this is a mini. I repurchased the full size. I'm waiting for it to come in from YesStyle. I paid full price, but I know, I know. <laughs> That's almost heresy for me, but I paid full, well, I had a 15% off coupon. I did wait till the YesStyle 15% off. So I'm waiting for that to come in because I think that is going to be in my top 10. I'm not entirely decided just yet, but I think it's going to be it really helped me a lot. Because as long as I have this in my routine, then I can just focus on calming in the toner step. You know, it just, it simplifies my life and that's what I want. I want my routine to be, you know, segmented nicely to make a lot of sense and this is just a product that really improved my skin. As a person with acne, I do not think you need it if you don't have, you know, issues with bacteria. The Costa Baja Azelaic Acid Serum, it really took me a while to like azelaic acid, in all truth, it really did, especially this one because I didn't love the texture of that. But I figured out that for me, I needed to hit a point where I could combine that with my adapalene, and once I've hit that point, which now I have, now I do like azelaic acid. I feel it is a really good, really good option for my skin type because I struggle with AHA ingredients, and yet azelaic acid gives you a very gentle way of fighting hyperpigmentation. It's a great fit for me, but I had to work up to that point because uh, prior to working up to that, you know, it's a little, it feels itchy. That's actually pretty common. A lot of people report that. It feels itchy, it feels drying, but once your skin adjusts, then it's no problem to combine that with adapalene in my case. Okay, now for all the barrier support. Manyo Bifida Biome Complex Ample. I love that so much. I already have a backup. I absolutely love that. That did so much for my barrier. That did so much for general skin health, and it's not too expensive. I know a lot of people call it a dupe of the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair. Again, skincare dupes are tricky, but I, I think for me, yeah, I, th I think for me it is. Whole video on that if you want more information. Haru Haru Wonder, I really love this uh, Black Rice Hyaluronic Botanical 2GF Wonderful Ampoule for Intensive Repair. It is using growth factors. That does make for a formula that won't be for every person out there, but it is really, really effective for specifically healing. I noticed that, you know, this is a little more preventive, whereas this is a little more healing. Again, at least on my skin. And bringing in liquid gold, liquid gold, this probably is, it's in my top three products of all time. It is so skin strengthening, exactly as it says right there. When I combine either these or these, depending on where my skin is, oh my goodness. Now again, I said I want to let you into my mind, so I, I know that these two are holy grails for me. This is the one where I bought another bottle of this, I'm testing it out right now, I'm trying to decide, does it also fit in as my absolute holy grails? You know, is this enough of a distinction to say prevention and treatment uh, on my skin? Basically, does that justify having pretty much three holy grails that are uh, all different sides of the same uh, d dice? Dry py pyramid? No, that, no, not pyramid. <laughs> I think what I'm trying to say is that there really are a lot of great skincare products out there and it's it's almost hard narrowing them down. You know, it, that's the hard part. When you first get into skincare, you're going, are, are there any good products out there? But after several years of being into skincare, it, yes, there's lots of good products, but which ones are the best of the best? That is a hard question. That's a very hard question. Moving into the moisturizer section, and I have our occlusive slugging products here, and then our, our, our moisturizers over here. Let me actually get this one out of the way. This is the Peter Thomas Roth Water Drench Hyaluronic Cloud Rich Barrier Moisturizer. 
I liked that, but for some reason, it kind of started irritating my skin. I did get this in PR. It started irritating my face, so I uh, moved it to my décolleté. <laughs> you know, is it décolleté or décolletage, or are both correct? Anyway, I moved it to that area of my body, and it was really nice, but I'm still trying to figure out why it was irritating my skin. This is why I've moved away from a lot of Western products. I feel like they cram, with Peter Thomas Roth especially, they cram a lot of really potent ingredients in, which can be great, don't get me wrong, that can be great for a lot of people, but as you, you just saw my barrier support conversation, I have a difficult skin type, and I think that is why a lot of Western products can be really difficult for me. All that said, I'm not mad about it because sometimes I think about how uh, good my chest area looks. <laughs> not to brag, not to, you know, get full of myself over here. But years of dumping my neglected face products in that area, it's a, uh, I mean, I'm not complaining in the end. You know, I'm not. <laughs> Out of these three though, this was my favorite, the Thank You Farmer Rice Pure Gel and Cream. That was just a, a supposed mini size, a one fluid ounce size, but uh, whoa, it, it was absolutely amazing. I loved playing with that. I talked about that in my K-Beauty for Mature Skin video. I did repurchase that one. It's hard for me to put moisturizer in my holiest of holy grails because in all truth, I feel that is a very uh, interchangeable step. I, I feel like you can choose a drugstore or a high-end moisturizer and the end results aren't always that big of a difference. But if we're talking about enjoyment from the experience of moisturizer, I think there can be a lot to talk about there. And I loved the enjoyment factor of this love since I repurchased it. Manyo's Bifida Biome Aqua Barrier Cream. It's fine. It's just too lightweight for my skin. I did receive that one from them. And let's talk about these occlusive products. Or, uh, since we mentioned Style Korean shipping and uh, expiration dates, CVS is even worse. Can you see that this is expires 10, 2023? We did it. We did it, friends. Not that there was really any question, I use Aquaphor a lot because if you haven't gathered from this point in this video, your girl deals with barrier issues and ooh, there's nothing quite like slugging for treating that. You know, the thing is, this is a petrolatum based product. It is an ingredient that not everybody wants to use because of the ties to the oil industry. I do want to clarify there's nothing, you know, dirty about this, but I try to be respectful of the many reasons that people make their choices. I don't think it's as cut and dry as, you know, people are scared of unclean skincare. I think there can be a whole lot more nuance. So I'm always trying these alternatives that don't use products from the oil industry. And this one from Pyongkang Yule, the Calming Moisture Barrier Repair Balm, it is nice. It was a very nice product, but it's a lot more expensive than Aquaphor, and I still do feel, honestly, nothing really quite beats Petrolatum. So it's a tricky conversation. For me, the holy grail here, it, it is. It is Aquaphor. Or CeraVe's Healing Ointment, you know, there's a lot of Petrolatum-based options out there, but yeah, I think that I always end up with those as my holy grails because frankly I think that ingredient, petrolatum, that's, that's the winning ingredient. What a shame that it is connected to the oil industry, you know, but I don't, I don't have a better solution. I think that's, it, it's that ingredient that's doing it. We have a small section of eye and lip care for this video and I feel like I'm eating my words from the last time we did an empties where I had no eye cream. And now I have three, let me explain. <laughs> I do really like this one. I do, I do, I love the Glow Recipe Guava Vitamin C Bright Eye Gel Cream. It's almost more of, it's almost more of a serum eye cream combo in terms of how it acts for my eye area. It's a cute little bottle, adorable. It, it was hard to get the last of it out of this though. You know, I feel bad because a week ago I talked about Glow Recipe in, in a Sephora bestsellers video and it, it just wasn't my favorite products. I actually like the guava line and I do like the avocado line. But yeah, I do I do like some of their products. They're cute, they're fun. You don't necessarily have to spend the money on them, but they are cute, fun, and if you find the right products for you, effective. Manyo Bifida Biome Concentrate Eye Cream. The only reason that is in this video is because I did use it all over my entire face. This has the texture that I wish the moisturizer I just showed you had. 
Uh, maybe Manyo will expand their collection though. We'll, we'll see. Pharmacy Wake Up Honey Eye Cream, I did receive that in PR and I did enjoy it, but honestly, I, I actually did go through that one pretty quickly. Kind of too quickly. I like the Pharmacy Honey products. I, I do. I think they're great, but I no longer feel like I have to buy them. I've just found a lot of K-Beauty that for me is comparable in terms of what it does, and yet the price point is lower. And then this was probably PR as well, the Fresh Sugar Advanced Therapy Recovery Lip Mask. I like it, but it's just not a holy grail for me. You all know that is the Grande Pout Lip Mask. Wait, can I, can I tell you all something before we move on from this section? <laughs> Do you see my bracelet? It says, never, never give up. My mom got me this kit of motivational DIY bracelets, and this is the one I made. I like it, you know? I feel like it's fitting for my uh, scientifically based, grammatically correct skeptic lifestyle. There's a charm in that set that says, follow your heart, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do with, with follow your heart? Ministry of Silly Walks? Naruto run into the room? How do you follow your heart? It follows me. We are in our final section, which is sunscreen as well as, let's just call this other. <laughs> let's just call this other. Okay, so for sunscreens, I'm surprised I finished some because we have been so busy testing sunscreens over here. I still have to do for you all. And you let me know what you would rather see. I'm thinking either the most popular K-Beauty sunscreens or my personal favorites. I don't know if I want to do both. Or should I do both? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, Dermatology Universal Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46. That is one of few hybrid Western sunscreens that I can use and I love it. Somehow the tint actually works on my skin tone. I never believe Universal, but this one works on my skin tone. And I really like it. I, I really like it. They have sent me a few of these. I am so happy to get it because yeah, it's, it's a really nice sunscreen. They do run some really good sales on their website as well. Make Prim UV Defense Me Daily Sun Essence. I love that one. That one has been lost for a while, but I found it along with this, and so we finished these. See, this is why I finished these. <laughs> Both of these were missing. Sunscreen and lip balm, the only two categories that I temporarily misplace. I do like the Peslo as well. I am not sure if that is mineral or hybrid. I, it, it seems there was a lot of confusion around that, which is why I stopped talking about it. So I don't know what happened there, but it made me uh, very hesitant in talking about it. However, you know, it, it works for me, so I finished it off. We have a lot more over here. So again, I have acne. Here's some acne patches. And this is coincidentally a mind-blowingly good selection of unknown, underrated acne patches. These Eliza Vecca blemish spot patches, I am telling you, those are thick, they are every bit as good as the COSRX, maybe as good as the Peace Out. Peace Out is pretty good, but very expensive. These are good, and I get them for $250 to $350 for a pack of $44. Super underrated. And look at how cute the packaging is. It's got, it's got pigs. It's so cute. These right here from Petite Fay. Petite Fay. I'm an American. Okay, so when I bought these, it was in my Style Korean haul. And I, I didn't think too much of them, but one of you commented that those were the best spot patches you've ever tried in your life. I might agree. I, I, I might agree. I cannot believe how fast my acne healed under these patches. I have never heard of these before. These do have some tea tree oil, asiatic acid, medecasic acid, asiatic acid. I, it, these were so good. I know I just said these were good, but these don't have those actives in them. These are just your, your high sucking power. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> no, that sounds bad, but it's good in the context of an acne patch. Like a vacuum cleaner is good if it sucks. These are thinner and yet really effective. I don't know. I like both of these. You see my struggle in choosing just one as a favorite. Do, do you see it? Are, are you seeing it? <laughs> These Starface swipes, I mean, I used them all. I think I got those in a trend mood box, yes. They were fine, but I don't think you need to buy stuff like this. You can just use, you know, an antimicrobial toner. And we talked a lot about that in today's video. I don't think you need to buy those, but 
I'll use it if I have it, like the Tower 28. The bat eye mask. I, can I tell you the story of how I bought this? So on YesStyle, I always try to hit $109 before discounts so I get express shipping. And sometimes I will have a cart that is what, $106? And that's when I go looking for something inexpensive to add to my cart. I had typed hat because you all know I love my hats, right? Or I thought I had typed hat, but apparently I'd accidentally typed bat. And so this popped up and uh, you know, you know, you just sometimes you got to try something when you see it. The bat eye mask, an eye mask that is shaped, it is shaped like a bat. I had to try it. I enjoyed treating my under eye area and my nose while looking like I had a bat stuck to my face. It, it, it was fun. You know, it was three dollars of fun. I just talked about this, the Rovectin Lotus Water Calming Sheet Mask. I feel like that has such a high-end texture to it, the mask itself. When I DIY my masks, it's not a cute look, you know, it, it doesn't look cute. This one actually, it, it's not that it looks cute, but it doesn't look like that. <laughs> and it's really calming. These are very good sheet masks. And then some toner pads, you can use those to make your own sheet masks as well. And I've been busy making sheet masks. I uh, just bought these, the Anua cotton pad for toner. We'll see how these are. It looks like it's gonna be, I haven't opened them yet, but it looks like it'll be a similar idea. I do feel there's a lot of options in this category if you are looking for cotton pads to DIY your sheet masks. Well, I thought this would be a fun way to end this video. Here's all the products from this specific empties that I have already repurchased or I already had a backup of in my collection. Yeah, these are uh, products I don't want to go without. But my friends, that brings us to the end of this empties video. Let me know your thoughts. Remember to let me know which uh, sunscreen video you would like to see before the end of this month. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll have some affiliate links in the description box if you would like to shop around, help support this channel, and that's it. Have a great rest of your week. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all next time.